Day three at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, and once again, it's Melania Trump's speech that's all the talk, something the campaign just can't seem to get past. Well, maybe they get past it uh, now that a speechwriter has come forward saying Melania Trump read her the quotes, and they ended up in the final draft. Here's what speechwriter Meredith McIver said in a letter, and here's the quote. Over the phone, she read me some passages from Mrs. Obama's speech as examples. I wrote them down and later included some of the phrasing in the draft that ultimately became the final speech, end of quote. She says she offered to resign, but the Trump camp refused that, so she's still on the staff. Let's get to Kimberly Gill, live in Cleveland. And Kim, this uh, letter, though, directly contradicts what the campaign has been saying. Devin, it definitely does, especially when you have people like Paul Manafort coming out and blatantly uh, calling those accusations absurd. I mean, it, the, the drama just keeps on coming, but I guess now the question is, what does the Trump campaign do now? Does this actually help or hurt? Can they put this behind them, move forward, and really start to concentrate on these last two days of the Republican National Convention? My parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. After days of accusations and denials about Melania Trump's RNC speech being plagiarized, today comes an apology. But does that apology make things better or worse? I asked that question to Nolan Finley of the Detroit News. I always thought it was a, a one-day story, 10%. That had to happen. Somebody had to step up and take the fall for it. I see Trump didn't fire her. Early Wednesday morning, before the apology broke, I sat down one-on-one -on -one with Donald Trump Jr., where he had this to say about his stepmother's speech. Someone like her, who's really, you, you haven't seen her on the trail much. She, she wants to be a mom. She wants to be a, a mom that's present for her son. So for her to get on that stage and just deliver it so well, you know, that should really be what overshadows everything, to be able to talk about that, to be able to talk about her immigrant experience. I think they're spending way too much time on it. I think they're giving it way too much energy. They should have made their statement and moved on. Uh, I think in responding to it and keep, it keeps it open and alive, they should be focused on tonight and Pence's speech. All right, and uh, now, as you can see, the uh, convention floor is behind me, and the party and the grand old party is set to get cranked up here about 7.30 tonight, where uh, the main person, the big attraction tonight, will be Donald Trump's vice presidential pick, Mike Pence, where he's set to speak. And coming up tonight on our 6 o'clock broadcast, I'm going to be talking to some of the Michigan delegates just about Pence and what they're looking forward to tonight in day three of the convention. We are live in Cleveland, Kimberly Gill, Local 4. Well, Kim, tell me a little bit more about uh, your conversation with Donald Trump Jr. That came right off of uh, his speech last night. Yeah, and, and, and everybody was really excited about it uh, uh, last night and, and first thing this morning. Devin, you know, he came across as a lot softer than he does if you watch him on yeah. uh, The Apprentice. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's no doubt he is, is a savvy business person uh, and, and, and somewhat like a politician. He was talking a lot like a politician, and I actually mm -hmm. asked him about that, you know, if politics was in his future, and he kind of laughed it off a little bit and uh, deflected the question like a politician would. <laughs> uh, but if you'd like to see uh, my interview in its entirety, I have it on our website. Just go to click on Detroit.com and we have it there for you. I think a number of people wondered about that in his future because he seemed awfully comfortable there at the podium last night. All right, Kim, we'll talk to you again soon. He was. All righty.